All right, welcome back to Flex Talks, the podcast, episode 112. Today on the show, AOC compares the illegal immigration we're seeing today to Ellis Island. We'll tell you why that makes no sense. Then Dave Rubin calls Kerry Lake an election denier. We'll tell you why he's a pussy and hint, it's not because he's gay. Then chaos continues in our schools. This time a teacher has a chair thrown at her head in urban decay. And in cringe of the week, a school tells parents that structural racism is a huge problem and you won't believe the example they tried to use. All this and more, it's Fleckus Talks, the podcast, episode 112, ranked the best new podcast of all time. Because words are just words until action actually starts. And actions speak louder than words, but at the same time, words speak louder than actions because sometimes it's the right thing to do. Very cool. 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 All right, one for one on the intro, as always. Guys, this week's episode is brought to you by FleckusTalks.com. Have you been on the fence about joining? Well, we have a very big announcement for you. There will be a bonus 30-minute bonus land episode after every public episode we drop on YouTube. So if you weren't sure about joining before, now is the time. That's an extra hour of content exclusively to FleckusTalks.com members every week. Four hours of exclusive content per month. And if you join today, you get the backlog of all of our past episode, hours and hours of content. We have a Discord. You can join the Discord and talk to us there. We have Q&As and exclusive interviews as well. Join FleckusTalks.com today. First month is free, so it averages out to about $7 a month, which is like an expensive coffee these days. So join today and get access to the bonus episodes that drop right after our public episodes drop. FleckusTalks.com is the website. Send me a screenshot showing you join for a chance to win a free t-shirt or a free base mug. FleckusTalks.com is the website. It is linked in the description. Thank you guys for joining. It makes the show operate on a high level. We couldn't do it without all of you. FleckusTalks.com is the website. Now let's get into housekeeping. All right. Thank you to FluckusTalks.com for sponsoring. It's very important to join. We are doing bonus land twice a week now. Yeah. It's a lot of fun, a lot of extra content, extra hour of content a week. Join or die. Join or die. That's where they got that That's from. That's where they keep saying. <laughs> All right. Our first story in housekeeping. We have a very important housekeeping today. Only three pages. Has there ever been an unimportant housekeeping? No, definitely not. Okay. Um, Dave Rubin, Carrie Lake. All right. Dave Rubin says, ouch, I've been unfollowed by election denier Carrie Lake for sharing her obvious lies about Florida and DeSantis. Ironically, she came up to me at the debate yesterday and said, don't take it personally. Here's a parting gift, Carrie. He posts uh -oh. a video of herself. Election denier. Calls, calls her an election denier. So take note, everybody. Dave Rubin thinks Joe Biden won fair and square. He thinks there wasn't enough fraud to overturn the election. And he, I guess he just wants everyone to go back to how politics used to be. Yeah. He just wants us all to be holding hands with our neighbors who believe it's okay to murder a baby nine months in the womb. Uh, the people who want us censored and eventually put in gulags. It's time to just go back to normal and join up with these great people and get our country back to how it was, I guess. Let's bury the hatchet. you got to bury the hatchet. And just go back to normal with the brain rotted retards who are closer than ever to destroying the country for good. Yep. Let's just team back up and put, you know, the politics is making everyone so divided. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> it's three such a, million illegals, you know? Yeah. Dumped into Bemidji, Bemidji, Minnesota. Mm -hmm. It's such a bad sign when people don't realize how high the stakes are mm. and they just don't seem to get it. It's like Joe Biden, oh, he got 81 million votes. The guy who didn't campaign and when he had events, no one went to him. The guy can't the guy who can't stand up. Yeah. Remember the little circles, the covid circles that they had? Oh, yeah. three. Re we can only host three reporters here. And yeah. It's like, thank God. Yeah. That guy got 12 million more votes than Obama. Yep. The, and the guy, you know, Obama used to actually fill arenas. I know. So and, you know, he's just he wants us to go back to normal with the Democrats who want to make abortion mandatory. Yeah. But Trump's the problem, I guess. Yeah. And I don't know. It's this DeSantis thing. He's he's hung up on DeSantis. And uh, I don't know. The, obviously, people are making the same arguments for Ron DeSantis. But no, I've seen no arguments on why, like, the guy who hasn't been able to make up any ground in any poll 
or get any sort of traction is for sure going to be the guy to beat Joe Biden. Yeah. You know, like that's that's the missing piece. You can talk about, oh, Trump is a big pharma guy and all that. Mm -hmm. you, you can make some legitimate points, right? Of course. Um, a lot, actually. And but you just can't make any point to, oh, yeah, well, then why isn't DeSantis pulling at 40, 30, 50 percent? You he know? should be going like this. He, he should be steady climbing. He's got the record, right? Unless he's got no swag and like no presence or something that yeah. they, they clearly haven't explained yet. And there was point. a DeSantis Fox tweet. From a, an, inter, an interview over the weekend, I believe. DeSantis on Fox. We need somebody that can win states like Georgia and Arizona, which President Trump cannot do or did not do, even though candidates like McCain and Romney had no problem winning those states. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's who you want to channel. <laughs> we need to go back to McCain and Romney times. <laughs> McCain and Romney times. That's who we need to be more like. Oh, if Trump could only be like those guys. And it's like clearly those were the states with huge fraud. So they're they're playing the game. Like DeSantis and his team, it seems like, and the homosexual influencer mafia are going along with the idea that Trump couldn't win those states because of Trump, not because of fraud. Yeah, not because Ruby Freeman had a stack of ballots. <laughs> yeah. You know. Interesting approach. All right, moving on, kind of in the same light. Dana Perino, Fox News host. Uh, she had something to say about Hillary Clinton that I couldn't believe I was hearing. Of our organization with somebody that you are here to see, the amazing Secretary Hillary Clinton. Here she is. The amazing Hillary Clinton at the Clinton Global Initiative. So another sellout. That's some Travis Kelsey shit right there. That's a scalp for them. They put it on their wall like a, like a prize. Oh, exactly. It's like, how much were you paid for that? 150 k maybe? To say Hillary Clinton's amazing. Better. It's, you better have. <laughs> like, right? <laughs> and it's clearly, it's, to them, it's not about the money. They just want the scalp. Mm -hmm. And, the, you know, the message the is. The skin rug. Yeah, the message is what they want. They want a Fox News host saying the amazing Hillary Clinton. And they're kind of getting their assets in place for 2024. We now have, in that situation, Fox News praising Hillary Clinton. Gavin Newsom is hanging out with Alex Soros. Taylor Swift and Michelle Obama are planning some stuff. The money laundering to uh, Ukraine continues. It's like a military parade for them. Yeah. They're just yeah. lining up all their They're assets. showing off. Yeah. <laughs> they're showing off. And they're strong. Can I say something about uh, Alex Soros' suit here? Uh-huh. Looking like a Kmart type, like mm. the black shirt. Yeah, I'm not a fan of uh, the black shirt and the shiny tie. That's, yeah. that's low-class shit. All right. That's the kind of stuff you buy in a box. Obviously, he can buy and sell me in a heartbeat, but, yeah. you know, you'll get like shit. have you killed right now, probably. Uh, probably. So I'm not saying we're fucked based on all those things and the assets in place, but whatever's coming is definitely coming. Uh, moving on, uh, speaking of Ukraine, a color revolution seems to be starting in Poland. Here's a background going of a big protest in Poland, an anti-government protest. Um, and then there was a good tweet about it from Zero Hedge, I believe. They, or raw egg nationalist. Oh, raw egg nationalist. Yeah. Uh, uh, give it a read, please. He said, within two weeks of Poland saying it would halt arms transfers to Ukraine, this happens. This is what happens to vassals of the late stage empire that don't do as they're told. Yep. That's what happens. You don't fall in line with the Ukraine money laundering operation. Then they have a revolution and they overthrow your government. Is that who those people are, though? Like it. I think it's a, it's an anti-government protest. Okay. So we'll see how it plays out. We'll Monitoring keep eyes closely. Because, you know, usually Poland does the right thing, but they are a little hungry to defend their borders and get other people involved. And they go, we've seen what happens before. Mm -hmm. And then what? Drag the United States into something? Yeah. We like Poland. Po Poland has great policies and immigration and no terrorism. And uh, they're not doing demographic changes. So the Western world hates that. Yep, and that's why they have these fake protests. All right, moving on. We have some Taylor Swift, Travis Kelsey updates. Um, so we covered last week how Travis Kelsey sold out and did the Pfizer ad and Bud Light ad. And now I was thinking we should extrapolate and then whatever other companies are working with Travis Kelsey, we should assume that they want us dead or gay too. Okay. All right. I see where you're going with this. And yeah, I agree. That's the logical conclusion, right? So like Heinz did a thing. Heinz creates ketchup and seemingly ketchup and seemingly ranch. Yeah. I think someone reported on her eating chicken tenders with like breaking Taylor Swift eating ketchup and seemingly ranch. So I uh, think they're doing a head nod to the overhypeness of this shit. Yeah. But I don't even – I'm wasting brain space on this. Yeah, you know what me I mean? Too, me it's too. hurting me. 
So Heinz is another company that wants us dead. I saw Campbell's Chunky Soup. They want us dead too. They did an ad with Travis Kelsey. Any companies working with Travis Kelsey are on the bad guy side now. <laughs> We're just extrapolating. Got it. All right, we have to move on. Uh, we have a COVID update. We have a lot of COVID. First is the article. The smart people are getting the shot. It says smart people first in line for COVID nineteen vaccine study suggests. <laughs> That's how you get. Is that how you get dumb people to go get vaccinated again? I don't know. <laughs> Tell them that all the smart people are lining up. Yeah. Like, oh, well, I'll be there. Um, and then we have pilots collapsing. Yeah, this is from a broader tweet. This guy William Mackis, MD, is has been tracking pilot incapacitations, mm -hmm, sudden mm -hmm. you know drop offs, whatever. Uh, do you want me to read a bunch of yeah, these? Yeah, read or? some. Uh, pilot inca incapacitation, Delta flight two ninety one, Charles de Gaulle to LAX. Uh, pilot became incapacitated, was taken to cabin for care. Plane diverted to Minneapolis. Pilot taken to hospital. That was the third pilot incident in three days. Uh, September 24th, Austrian Airlines, uh, Stuttgart to Vienna. The captain became incapacitated. First officer took control. Alaska Airlines, uh, September 23rd, 37-year-old Captain Eric McRae died suddenly in his hotel room during layover. Was to fly that morning. Just missed it. Uh, Air Canada flight Vancouver to Ottawa. One of the pilots fell felt ill and became incapacitated 50 minutes before landing in Ottawa. So we had three incidents in three days, and then this guy just lists a bunch. There's that more, go yeah. On he, and on. I, I can't keep going, but apparently he's tracking it. And uh, what does it mean? I don't know. I think we've called that on the show before, mm -hmm. and I think we've literally said pilots are going to go down because they force everyone to get the Maxine. Yeah, Maxine Waters, of course. Yeah. Um, and yeah, thankfully there's two pilots on most flights, and there's no dual coincidences for a flight to go down. <laughs> a dual uh, coincidence isn't I, crazy. But we are coming up on that. Are there any pilots on the plane phase? We're, yeah. we're landing into there. So that's what comes next. And then maybe like the secondary pilot, the first pilot goes down and then they get their heart rate up like, oh, no. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and then that could trigger something. Yeah. So be careful out there. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. T did a Pfizer ad or a, a vaccine ad. Hey, everybody. This is Mr. T. I'm about to get my COVID vaccine booster shot. I'm in my sketches. Yes, I do everything in sketches. Yes, I get healthy in sketches. You heard me. Get your vaccination booster. Arr. Oh, man. All right. We don't have to see it go in. So Skechers is his last brand deal. Yeah. <laughs> is that what we're getting out here? This is the late stage capitalism, whatever they call it. <laughs> where, where they squeeze you out. They milk the last bit out of you, and it's Skechers for old people. Skechers for old people and the Maxine. All right, let's move on. Uh, we've been using some schizo emojis lately that I wanted to share with you guys. Uh, we'll have them kind of just cycle through back here, and I'm going to get out of the way so you can screenshot them. Feel free to screenshot these. We've been using these in the group chat with the boys. When, they, they work especially well when someone has a failed bit, yeah. and then you do the meta irony, giant laughing, crying <laughs> face. <laughs> like, yeah, so feel free to screenshot those. Let's get the last couple up there. Make sure you screenshot them and use them in your group chats and use them to roast people. All right, the Chinese fake belly buttons. Yeah, what, what's your angle here? Chinese influencers are using fake belly button stickers to make their legs look longer. I was going to say, I don't see any belly buttons on that graph that look like mine. You have... The blowhole, <laughs> belly button, the golf ball sized one. I'm yeah, assuming. I don't know why they don't have. They don't make them my size. I guess. Yeah, I guess the dainty Chinese girl market and your belly button. They don't overlap. There's much. no overlap on that Venn diagram. Yeah. All right, we have to move on. Okay. Um, You're the one who brought this up. Powerball. <laughs> Powerball's over a billion. Is that correct? I think so. Uh, or it's we're filming this Monday. It, it might have somebody might have hit. All right. Well, hopefully not. We guys, we need to play. Uh, Powerball is basically our only hope and our only way out of this. <laughs> our only way out of this is to win the Powerball um, to escape the man-made hell. Yeah, 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 yeah. We need to do it. And I, I have a that. new strategy. Hey, I play I play when it's close to a Billy. Yeah, I'm me too. In. And Rapway plays, and he has this thing where he's like, I don't give you any of my tickets. So, yeah, I have this thing where Fleckus never drives anywhere. He's always depending on me. He's like, oh, will you grab me one? Oh, will you grab me one? And I can't physically do it. I can't buy him one and then hand him one because if that one wins, then it would kill me. And it's two dollars. I'm not worried about the money. Yeah, I'm worried about handing someone the fucking mega billion ticket. Yeah. So I don't know, audience. What do you think? 
Let us know what you think. I can't do it for him. He can come with me. Yeah. I, I told you with... I'll break you off. I have a new. Yeah, I'll break you off. I'll break you off. You but you're not billy. getting my winning. You win ticket. a billy. You give me what? 50 grand. Something stupid. No, 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 no. I'll take care of you, buddy. All right. Come on. All right. 50 well, grand. Something stupid. I have a new strategy for everyone. You buy. It's called buying one single ticket. One ticket. I like that play. And you just buy one ticket because my theory is you're buying hope. If you're gonna win, you're gonna win. Yeah, it's destiny. It's destiny. One ticket out of all the millions of tickets sold. If you're gonna win, you're gonna win. So just buy one ticket. That's kind of like a fun thing to do. That's fair. So make sure you guys buy them. And yeah, and uh, oh, I don't want to hear any comments like, "Oh, it's the tax for the poor people." It's this. It's a long shot, guys. We're here for the it's long the shot. Literal lottery ticket. It's literally a lottery ticket. That's oh, it's a tax for the poor. Yeah, when it gets to a billion, tax me. I'm poor. Yeah, here's two bucks. That counts as my tax. Mm-hmm. One ticket. If you're going to win, you're going to win. All you need is one ticket. Yep. All right, use this opportunity to juice the algo, tickle the post, like, share, subscribe. Um, they already do that. Notifications, comment, comment again. Like the video. The second comment later in the episode, that's where the horsepower comes in. Yeah. So So leave a comment just to get us going and then comment about what you like later. Come back later. All right. Alex Jones getting choked out. This is a good video. Yeah. Are we going to choke you out afterwards? No, no. Any Bravo wouldn't do it. Come choke me out. (laughs) Come on. Come do it. Wide shot. So he comes over. Fast forward. Fast forward to the choke. Little rear naked. All right, here he goes. My favorite is the afterwards. Yeah. My favorite's right here. When he snores. And then he goes, what happened? What? What did I just do? What was I just doing? <laughs> you asked me to check you out. You're back there. Oh, to actually pass out? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> well, that's for the culture. Yeah. yeah somebody had to do you it. You see how he snored awake? He goes, snarled himself. <laughs> he snarled. Um, that's good stuff. Yeah. At least that guy did it. Hey, that's those are our pieces getting in order. We saw Alex Soros with uh, Gavin Newsom. We saw, you know, all mm-hmm. their pieces. Dave Rubin moving against Kerry Lake. We're practicing to get choked out. We're, we're getting choked out and snarling ourselves awake. Yep. I can relate to that. All right, we're moving on. We're still in housekeeping. This is our last page of housekeeping. Immigration. We have an interesting immigration uh, section today. Let's start with a throwback clip in honor of the late Dianne Feinstein. The day when America could be the welfare system for Mexico is gone. We simply can't afford it. And I think you've seen the figures to state and local governments of what the cost is. It's over $2 billion in California alone. And I have those figures if you want them in specific uh, in my purse. Uh, And that's why the issue is now joined with two million illegal immigrants. It's, It's a competition for space. Whether the space is a job, the space is a home, a place in a classroom, it becomes a competition for space. That's good. So, hey, let's look. We can look back on Diane Feinstein's career and then, like, you could almost rewrite how she was. I know. With like clips like that. Unfortunately, the voting record is extensive. Yeah, something and bad. Heavily happened. recorded. Yeah. And, and he had that Chinese spy at the end. It got, got out of hand. It got greasy. She was off the rails. Um, and <laughs> But so it's so funny to me whenever we see someone with a correct opinion at one point. And yeah. it's like, what changed it for you? Did your whole outlook and worldview change? Did your donors change? Did the big corporate interests who said, no, we want those bodies in the spaces. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it also strikes me how small those numbers are. Two million illegals. Ooh, yeah. to a billion dollars. Oh, my God. We're like two billion a day. Yeah. Uh, money wh- more, probably. Um, yeah. The, it got so out of hand. I used to say, because they've always said, oh, there's 12 million illegals here. They've been saying that since the 90s. Yeah. And I've been saying it's like really 30. But based on this last year. I want to up my number to 50 million illegals. Yeah. And then they'll tell you that. They'll tell you the real number during some sort of extensive survey 15 years from now when it's too late. Yeah. And, uh, oh, yeah, white people are a minority already. Bye. Yeah, exactly. Uh, And then here we have the uh, another clip of Border Patrol cutting the barbed wire fence. Yeah, we get one of these a week. 
It's like, you're a border patrol. What's your job? Keep illegals out. Okay, what are you doing? You're cutting the fence and letting everyone in. Yeah, Crutch's guy. He's ready to contribute to American excellence. Yeah. He just wants the American dream. He's hobbling in. Hobbling in, <laughs> broken. And they clap. The NGO workers, whoever's there. Oh, this is bad, guys. Oh, man. And then we saw the fist bump, right? You yeah, just... yeah, here's the fist bump. Here's Border Patrol. There he is. Treason. Gracias. 50 years in jail for the Border Patrol agent in my administration. They're just letting them in. They're fist bumping. Yep. It used to be the opposite of that. And then there's a migrant voter situation happening now um, where it's the headline is voters say migrants voting illegally will affect 2024 election outcome. Yeah. A majority of Americans, 51 percent, believe that illegal immigrants may cast ballots in the 2024 presidential election and influence the outcome, according to a recent survey. So this isn't really fact. It's more just opinion of the average yeah. voter. But I th what do you think? I, that you think, rings true to me. You think uh, all the no IDs, no, oh, I live on this street. I live on West Street. And they go, come on in. And then yeah. they obviously don't check any of the ballots, signatures, anything, all the tools that were in place in the past. They and, just go yeah. run it through. And the people already broke the law to get here. So they're not going to they don't really care about like uh, the, you know, American rules and how things go here. So if someone gets in their ear and maybe offers them some money or says, hey, if you want to stay, you need to vote Democrat or else Trump's going to uh, deport you kind of like in 2020. But, yeah. instead of, but instead of the BLM types, it's the illegals. Yeah, the police are going to kill you if you vote for Trump. <laughs> yeah. And now it's Trump's going to deport you if you don't illegally vote for vote for Biden. Yeah, so there's going to be like a thing where it's like, well, if Trump wins, you're gone anyway, so you need to vote. Might as well do one last crime on the way out. <laughs> yeah. And hope that Joe Biden wins. I think that's really what's going to happen. And then they've always had these conversations. With or the they'll be the guys who just go and take the packet of ballots and go dump it in the spot. And it's yeah. like random illegal immigrant number 24 and there's no data there's nowhere oh let's use some facial recognition or and something even if they catch him they go oh we got him but it's like oh the ballot still went through it's ecuadorian national eduardo salvarez and it's yeah. like okay uh so that's you know, kind so, of so foreign foreign interference in our election is only if it's from russia or something it's not yeah. you know but that's what i think is coming for this one Mm -hmm. um, they'll use them as the, what do they call them? The goats? No, the, uh, mules, the mules. Yeah. That's where they'll get some mules. And then also with the voting stuff, the illegals always, the idea for illegals voting is always like justified by, well, they should just vote locally because they need a say in how they're governed, like on the school boards or whatever the local elections are. And they kind of start there and then they work their way up once they get in the system it's yeah called. california gives them driver's licenses don't they mm -hmm. so you know every state has their own various little rules to fuck over you johnny taxpayer johnny yeah. american citizen taxpayer boy exactly let's go to aoc's video about ellis island yeah aoc will we'll never find a video of aoc having a smart take from 30 years ago <laughs> so like let's just enjoy what we get of when it comes to people coming to new york city today are nothing i'm telling you nothing compared to the daily amounts of people that we saw coming in from through Ellis Island in the first half of this century. You're seeing, you know, more than 12 million immigrants that passed through Ellis Island between 1892 and 1954. And we had seen- That's enough. She's on Wikipedia, like on her live. In 1892 to 1954, that's like 60 years. Yeah. And it's 12 million. And like now we've had like we we'll have like that much in the last couple of years. Yeah. And she has no idea. And all those people that came here, they came through Ellis Island, which was a legal process. And a lot got turned away. A lot got sent back. A lot got analyzed. Oh, you're sick or whatever. You got typhus, get the fuck out. And they got sent back. They weren't jumping the border in the middle of the night. Yeah. And they were also coming here with no safety net. So if you came to America, you had your little pockets of family, you live with them. But if you didn't make it, you you starved. No, dude. My grandpa came through Ellis Island. They brought him right to a hotel room. They got <laughs> they got him on a meal plan. He started sucking taxpayer money. He got checkups, doctors, whatever he needed. Yeah. And back then we needed people. The yeah. country was was small. We needed people. We needed to build infrastructure. We needed to build buildings. We had jobs for people. We had stuff to do. We had to build highways and improve the rail system. We had like a whole list of things that needed labor and people and people came and they were excited to be American and then they assimilated and they became American, learned how to speak English, 
Now people come and they get put up in the Roosevelt Hotel in New York City. Yeah, and they get in fights with the local police at the ground level because they have nothing to do all day. Yeah. So what are, what are they even doing here? Yeah, we have a scene from outside of a hotel in New York City. Here's what it looks like. Lots of loitering. A lot of loitering. And we just have all these people here. And the most expensive city in the country, one of the most expensive cities in the country. Yep. Here's where we're going to set them up. And they have them set up in the Roosevelt Hotel as one of the hotels. Mm -hmm. And Mayor Adams said they're running out of hotel rooms. Of course. I mean, yeah, we've been covering this for a while now. And so it's, it's only getting worse. And the it's similar to Ellis Island, though. Yeah, it's everyone, really close. You know, everyone comes here illegally, and then they get put in the Plaza Hotel. D yeah, didn't our grandparents meet at Ellis Island, and then they just hung around at, at street level all yeah. day? They never got work. They never did made families. They never created anything. Exactly. And they were they, they have the budget right now, a billion in hotel rooms over the next three years, which ends up for 57,000 people, illegal migrants, which ends up being 210,000 per migrant. Two hundred and ten thousand dollars, which is double the like more than double the average income. It's like a lawyer, a guy who goes to law school. He does everything. He goes into debt for it, and then we're spending that on some random Ecuadorian man, or even worse, like a West African who somehow made his way to the southern border. Yeah. So that's where all the money's going. Yeah. And if you complain, a guy you, who you will never people. earn that much money in his life. Yeah. That's that's the American dream now. Yep. We have a meme that kind of goes along with all this. It says, uh, abort our children, import hostile immigrants, disar uh, disarm ourselves. You almost couldn't do that I one. I almost couldn't even read it. Yeah, you know, just a little a little great replacement theory uh, happening right now. You know, D demoralize the uh, native population, bring in a bunch of cheap third worlders to uh, replace them. And, you know, you know who wins? Mm -hmm. Cheap corporate wages, you know? Mm -hmm. They get them fighting. There's some pork store. There's some pork farm in North Carolina right now who just got 90 new workers to exploit. Yeah, that's a good point. All right, let's move on. So that's what's great about America. All right, moving on. I have a question for you, Richard. Okay. Have you ever been to a Native American restaurant? No, I haven't. What's your favorite Native American food? Maize. Oh, is that corn? I don't know. I was, yeah, say, I don't I was know. assuming you'd say I don't have one. I do not have one. Oh, that's weird. I never heard of, or, you know, never never seen a restaurant, never heard of, oh, this is a Native American dish. I'm just wondering what it could be. Maybe maybe there are, and, there, and I still don't know them. So let me know in the comments. All right. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Moving on. That's the end of housekeeping, unless you have anything else. Uh, do you want to tell the story about how you uh, stole a towel from Publix, you degenerate shoplifter? Um. Okay. I Yeah, I can tell that story because it's uh, not a big deal. But... We went to Publix before going to the beach the other day to get our pub subs. That's what you do in Florida. And I got a beach towel I was going to buy. So I put it over my shoulder. And then I was in line for the pub subs. Got took a while. Got my sandwich. Left. Went to the checkout. And I put the sandwiches on the, on the thing with some drinks and some chips or whatever. And I had the towel over my shoulder, but I forgot. Mm. So and I just paid it and left. And I stole the towel. And then the, the, it was crazy because the guy goes to me, anything else for you today? And I said, nope, that's it. <laughs> like an absolute psycho madman, which is the energy I would need to actually steal something in real life. So now I can get there, which is interesting. Ooh. And now I know what it takes to get there because I did like a light version of it. You got a little bloodlust. So I got like I know how to do it now, but I didn't mean to. And I, when I go back next week, I'll, I'll, I'll buy one. And All right. Can you look into the camera and just apologize? I'm sorry to Publix. It was an accident, and I'm going to replace the towel I stole last uh, next week. All right, moving on. We are done with housekeeping, and we're moving on to Cringe of the Week. Before we do, this message is brought to you by FleckusMerch.com. Guys, we have very cool shirts. The holidays are coming, believe it or not. It's also hoodie season. So if you're interested in getting some show merch, if you love the show, you like me and Richard Rapoy and the things we talk about, we have some great shirts for you. We have the podcast shirt, the podcast hoodie. We have the Clinton shirt, which is very cool and very popular. And of course, the free Big Don shirts. We have two versions of those. Check them out here. Fleckusmerch.com is the website for that. Get yours while you still can. All right. We are into cringe of the week. 
first clip of cringe is going to be a literal cringe. Let's go with the milk kid. This is just disgusting. Um, this is milk. I don't know how long it's been here for, but... Mm. Oh, my God. Ugh. Right on his stuff, that sour milk. I'm glad that happened to him. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, like, people, we've covered a lot of people who have dirty rooms and, like, old food in their house. Moldy shit. Yeah. That's why I'm happy uh, to have amps. Yeah, the amps. Because when you have amps, you have to keep a clean house because the amps will come, and then it actually makes you keep a clean house. It's kind of an incentive, yeah. You, you're you you're taught to play defense more. Yeah. And nothing and, gets moldy that way. And anything after, like, half a day is like, all right, got to move this so the amps don't form a union and head our way or whatever. Yeah. Um, the right. amps are unionizing like the Waffle House employees we've seen. Yeah, they're, crazy. they're getting out of hand. All right, let's get into some of the trans shit. That was ants. Ants. That was ants. Yeah. With a T. Yeah. Um, this person uh, arresting trans people. Yeah, let this one rip. Schools in Virginia have now begun arresting trans people and trans allies after their unconstitutional new transgender model policies have taken effect for students. What am I being arrested for? If you haven't heard about this, for please trans. listen up. Policy number one, teachers are supposed to bully trans students if the teacher has a trans girl in their classroom. That teacher is supposed to look up their biological boy name and call that girl who might be wearing a dress a boy name and use he him pronoun. That to me is humiliation. That is the definition of bullying. Policy two, that trans girl is now required to use the boy's Room. What do you think boys are going to do to that girl? It will undoubtedly harm that student. Policy three, if a teacher finds out that a student is trans. We firmly believe that parents have the right. They need to contact that trans kid's parents. Should be informed about their child's identity. And out that kid. Ah, so this is. <laughs> We're winning. Yeah. We're finally winning. This is like the chaotic. Um, Schizo dash. Schizo unhinged dash Dabrowski type, I guess, for trans people. Mm -hmm. So teach, rule no, policy one, teachers are supposed to bully trans students. <laughs> and then they said in the bathroom um, that what's going to happen to that trans student in the bathroom? They're going to get bullied, of course, beat up. And it's like, what's, I mean, you're probably more likely that the trans student's going to make everyone else uncomfortable in the bathroom. I think so. Like the guy to girl who's now in the girl's room, that's probably worse than whatever the girls are going to do to the guy, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Yeah. So I guess like not calling a kid by their fake name and then telling, telling their parents, hey, your kid's going by a fake name now. Uh, I just want you to be aware. This is courtesy call. <laughs> yeah. Like that courtesy call is like uh, a threat to their life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So back in the day, you know, a few generations ago, 18-year-olds were storming Normandy. But now the threat to the life and their grandkids, I guess, or this is what they talk about is the, the threat to their life. Teacher might bully me and tell mommy. Yeah. <laughs> That's basically yeah. what it is. <laughs> Literal. So we have this bit, uh, Richard Rapoy and I do. Whenever you hear like a liberal or a real progressive person talking about like Ron DeSantis wants it to be illegal to be gay. He doesn't want you to say gay. He, yeah. He's forcing gay families and trans kids to move out of Florida. Yeah. So whenever we hear stuff like that, we always take like imagine if you took the side of the guy who likes that. Yeah. Who's like the the nightmare that progressive like the nightmare person progressives think the right wing is. So it's like imagine, oh, I like that Ron DeSantis. He's making it so you can't say gay. He's getting all the gays out. I'm voting for him again. <laughs> yeah, he's making he's making it so you can't say gay. He's making it illegal to be trans. That Ron DeSantis has my vote. So we've just been doing that bit. I wanted to tell you guys about that. Yeah. Um, do you have the arresting trans people meme? Uh, what, this one? You yeah. should all change your core beliefs and values, your core values and beliefs so I fit in. And it's just this fucking, you know what it is. Yeah. And everyone else who's normal, <laughs> everyone else is normal. We have to change everything so they fit in. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the. It's so funny to me too that the the guy, one of the main tenets of his schizo rambling post is they're gonna tell the parents, and it's yeah. like once once the parents are told, anything can happen. The craziest shit you've ever heard in your life can happen. You know. Yeah, and it's like the parents are the the safety net for the kid. Yeah. They're the only ones who actually actively care like all the time, 24 seven about the kid. Yeah. Right. So this person wants that safety net removed. And then all the other trans people and the trans people on Reddit to raise the kid instead. Yep. And then, and then next time you, you get a surgery or something, you go, Hey guys, uh, sorry, kind of new here. Is this normal? And then they type out the most irregular thing you've yeah. ever heard of in your fucking life. My crotch is rotting out. Uh, some big pocket of pus came out of my shit, and it's like, 
the most disgusting yeah. thing you've ever heard, and your only place to go is like a Reddit forum. And then so. those Reddit people will be like, stop trying to discourage transitioning. <laughs> like they'll turn on you as soon as you're not 110% in their direction. Yep. All right, let's go to the mom who has the trans kid. This is a, a boy who's becoming a girl. How do you feel about having a penis? Grumpy. Grumpy. What do you wish would happen? Just magically a vagina comes. Yeah, that would be so nice. It's wrong having a penis on you, girl. It's wrong to have a penis if you're a girl? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it doesn't make sense, huh? It's kind of like a birth defect. Let me see it this is one. a birth defect. Mm -hmm. A birth see this defect. One. Being born a boy and having boy anatomy, that mom has that kid believing it's a birth defect. So you really can get them to believe anything. Yeah. And that's kind of the theme here. Um, you can teach a kid like how to think. Mm -hmm. And then you can also hijack their brain in a bad way and really get them to believe some stuff. Like this is like a, what, four or five-year-old kid yeah. who's, now, who's convinced they have a birth defect because they were born normal. Also, in terms of this mom, like objection leading the witness – Total, like, walking the kid down yeah. this lane of, like, oh, yeah, what do you think? Is it, what, magically change? Birth defect? Do you like it? Yeah. You know, get Separate this kid and this mom for two months, and uh, I guarantee you it, they won't be as enthusiastic about this fake little mental state they're in. Yeah, I, I, I guarantee that. Um, and then this theme was, t you know, hijacking a kid's brain, teaching them how to think a certain way. Mm-hmm. Next is um, a teacher's presentation where they talk about uh, structural racism. Uh, and this is the other side of it. Let's let this rip. Article shows that with evaded racism, the blame is um, usually placed on students of color and families for academic struggles because of their cultural um, practices or lifestyle or economic, socioeconomic status. Instead of looking at shifts um, in the oppressive or racist policies or structures, they address these um, challenges, um, encouraging students to change their behavior or families to do more um, things that more like white families do, like reading to their children or adopting like a growth mindset and kind of like um, ah, just reading to their children or adopting a growth mindset. So this whole presentation is about racism. And it, it's actually new racism. It's called evaded racism. What is new racism in K through 12? So we're already on like leg two of the racism narrative. Yeah. So they've solved some of the racism problems that they've had before. And now this is anti-racist racism, everyday racism, characterized in subtle and covert. Yeah. So reading to children and adapt adopting a growth mindset is considered white things. Yeah. Reading to your children, which requires zero skin color. It's not like you're out in the sun doing that. Yeah. It's not like you're, you know, um, and then apparently black people, I guess, can't do that because every time someone in a K through 12 is talking about racism, it's about black yeah, people. Yeah. That, that's the main focus. Mm -hmm. um, it's not, they're not about Mexican or the Asian kid or, you know, even if the white kids are the minority, they're not talking about them. Yeah. Um, and so it's just an insane thing to say, like, what? What's the implication here? Black people can't read or won't read to their children. And then that is a problem. And then how do we fix that problem? We need white people to read to the kids because we need to save the black people. But it's like, why, what about, why, why, what about, hey, every, every kid needs to be read to every day at home? Yeah. How about that's like the single greatest thing for vocabulary and uh, building a, a language set, you know, reading and reading to your kids is the number one thing to get you out. Yeah. And then what? We, but we can't recommend that because white people are too good at it. Yeah. Nighttime, bedtime stories. Yeah. So the, any accountability, instead of falling back on the parents of the kids, falls back on white people who need to help the struggling black kids uh, because them not getting read to isn't their parents' fault. It's a structural racism thing. Yeah. And like, I, I would get this idea of like racism affecting kids in school. You know, if they wanted to like pretend that, Oh, we need a $1,300 iPad for each kid. If it was something expensive and like, there's this new tech, it's basically Neuralink thing yeah. and all the white kids have it. Cause you know, the income is higher, but the blah, inner blah, city blah. schools, they don't have it. And if they get this, 
$1,300 each, then they can be just as blah, blah, blah. Like if that was the case, I guess it would make more sense. You're literally saying the kids aren't getting read to and you're blaming it on structural racism. Yeah. A medic Sisyphus had a great tweet about this that summed it up. He said, it's hard for normal people to understand what progressive progressives mean when they say structural racism. They mean any system that doesn't cater to the black community's current behavior problems. If black behavior patterns result in underachievement, it's the system that needs to change. If reading to your kids helps them in school, then a system that rewards kids who enjoy reading or doing their work is racist and needs to change. The only rule is that you must never criticize black behavior. The world needs to bend to fit their behavior. Yeah, so that's a great summing up of what's going on there. Yeah, it's not like, oh, just... Hey, I got a great idea. We're going to make books available for all kids, and then the parents can read them to the kids, or the kids can read them themselves with their mom, or they can read along with this YouTube. There's, I'm sure there's some lady on YouTube who posts herself reading a hundred books mm-hmm. minimum. You know, yeah, of and course. It, instead of that, it's just no, 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 no. Let's it, that's evaded racism, which is a new type, and uh, you're going to have actually have to learn about it. Yeah. Don't read to your son tonight. Learn about evading yeah, racism. Yeah, you have a problem in your school where the kids aren't reading and don't know how to read. And instead of addressing that problem, you're going to address the people who are reading to their kids yeah. and saying that they are a, a product of racist, structural racism. But, you know, it makes it easy for people like us who uh, they do a whole PowerPoint and a whole uh, Skype session with all the creators tuning in to learn about this new racism thing. And then the only example they can come up with is your children being read to. And adopting so a I'm, growth I'm, I mindset. Think, I think we're pretty good. I yeah. think we're pretty close to perfect, right? Yeah, we must be. There's Merriam-Webster is adding new words to the dictionary. It says Merriam-Webster has now added slang words like riz, mid, and bussin to the dictionary. Thanks, Merriam. Merriam. You had nothing better to do, Merriam? Well, and I was going to take the opposite side of this, which is that's all that's being invented now is retard words. Yeah, Cardi B shit. Cardi B shit. They're dumbing us down. She's in the Illuminati, Kanye says. Mm-hmm. Um, but and now that's the dictionary. So now that's what's going in the dictionary. You know, it's culture. Like the time of Shakespeare, the words getting added were fucking nice. Mm-hmm. They were like, whoa, this word means this? Yeah. Holy shit. Now we get Riz busted. We get Gen Z's leftovers. Yeah, and they don't so. even they can't even read. I can't even read that. Merriam Merriam Webster is coming out with a sixteen by nine vertical video dictionary. Bussin, <laughs> it just yells bussin at you. You go, oh yeah, I know bussin. Um, here's how they teach kids in China. <laughs> so while our kids can't read, look at this, clicking away. And he's just got some system in his head where he knows all the words and he knows all the numbers. Got yep, it right. Got it right. Oh, here he goes again. I think the kids at our age, you know, our kids in America that are that age, yeah, they probably don't even know the numbers. Like 484, they go 484. Like they don't even know how to say the number, I don't think. I don't know. I'm hesitant to say that. I'm like, because America has a lot of smart, very nice kids in very nice schools. Of course. just cost a lot of money now. And they're getting a ton of attention and they're doing great. But all we're talking about is the lowest common denominator or like a random white kid in a school with a bunch of like uh, underachieving minorities, right? Mm -hmm. Like who aren't getting read to or whose parents don't give a fuck. Or a third of the class doesn't speak English. Then it's like that kid's screwed. Yeah. And if he's an earnest, hard worker who's actually trying and the class is so dumb and the teacher's given up, then they're fucked. That's who gets left behind. And and the wealthy, the nice kids who uh, are – Spending money on schools that actually teach and are good, they're doing fine, you know? Yeah. So I don't want to get into a, like, we're shitting on the entire education system. Yeah, that's true. It's not everybody. There's some excellence out there, guys, but. Yeah. I've, uh, we're having Justin Awad go out to shoot some more videos. We're doing another collab with him uh, pretty soon. And I said, uh, a lot of times people will say, oh, you just found a couple people who don't know anything. You edited out the right answers. Mm -hmm. I said, let's approach groups of people now. Okay. Say, hey, does anyone here know what five plus five plus five is? Mm -hmm. And watch them all go. 25. Duh. 25. Duh. Yeah, exactly. So that's coming soon. All right. We have to go through this next clip fast because we're running out of time. The coffee girl. Here's a person who never learned how to read probably. She put chocolate syrup on the outside of the cup. So the whole cup is sticky and unusable now. See the dead eyes? Yeah. Not a thought.
Nails. The nails. Uh-oh, she almost made a mistake there. That's good. We get it. And then she puts she puts uh, marshmallows on, and she toasts the marshmallows at the end. A real sophisticated drink. That's what happens when you don't read to your kids. Yeah, you don't read to your kids. They can't do math. They can't read. Final and, warning. And they make streams uh, where they make a chocolate coffee, and they spray the chocolate on the outside. Yeah. You're going to get home. Your entire countertop is sticky. You go, what the fuck is this? You didn't even clean it? And it's like, oh, what'd you make? I mean, you made a... Dessert coffee. You made a dessert coffee and you put the chocolate on the outside? What do you... What do you what, Why'd what, you do that? I, I would... It would, like, make me... It would make me berserk. Yeah. It would make me lose... Like, I would lose my shit at that. Yeah. My biggest fear is having a stupid kid. You explain something to them and they just, like, don't get it. And then you're kind of like, fuck. Yeah. I'm stuck. Yeah. Yeah. Which is why you got to marry someone smarter than you, or at least close. Or at least reach for it. Yeah. Or at least close. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We're in urban decay now. Uh, we still have uh, the theme of schools okay. in this week's urban decay. First, the chair thrown at the teacher's head. This was in Michigan. So this is why you can't have expectations for your students in stupid schools like this with stupid kids. Because if you have any sort of high standards and say, don't do that, or you shouldn't do this. I don't allow that in my classroom. You don't allow this, or you can't say that, or you need to do this over again. You have expectations. Someone's going to throw a chair at you because they don't understand. You get a chair thrown at your head, and that's on you for having standards. You should have been just babysitting those kids, giving them hot chip. Hot chips. Whatever they want. Phone time and hot chips. Yep. That's kind of what they did in this next clip. Yeah, and this is, well, you can't, you're, the, none of these kids are going to be mad at the teacher for yeah. having any standards in this class. This is what I would do. Normal day in Chicago high school. And these guys are just shooting dice in the classroom. That's fun. That teacher's never getting a chair thrown at his head. You know yeah. why? Because he realized none of these kids are going to read. None of these kids can read. It's hopeless. What do I want to do? Do I want to get a chair thrown at my head and fight and try to like teach them to read second grade math or second yeah. grade English, whatever? No, I'm going to be a babysitter. Yeah, I teach 10th grade math. None of these kids can do more than fifth grade math. Am I going to teach them five grades of math and then 10, 10th grade math? Or am I just going to collect my state paycheck in the Illinois pension system, which is our, which is constantly borrowing from the next generation? Yeah. Or uh, am I just going to shut the fuck up and collect my checks and not get a chair I thrown in my head? you shut the fuck up and you just kind of let everyone do their thing. And dice, you know, that's that should be cheap. Keeping these kids, keeping 30 kids in a classroom, letting them shoot dice all day. Imagine the teacher, like, they go, damn, a dice flew out the window. And the teacher's like, hold on, I got a new pack. <laughs> he, he's the one supplying him just because yeah. he wants peace. Yeah. And then also, interestingly enough, dice, you know, there's always that, like, uh, delusion, like we talked about the other week, where uh, finding Forrester, you're going to find the one genius kid who just needs inspiration. And it's like, if they started playing poker, it's like, great, I can teach them about the odds, mm -hmm. the pot odds. I can teach them about the preflop percentages and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Dice is just, did you get the number or not? Yeah. Oh, it ain't seven. I got seven. I got seven. I <laughs> I used to roll dice in high school uh, with the urban kids a Yeah, lot. and you also read at grade level. You got into an Ivy League school. You did math. You had a tutor. So, yeah, you earned a little dice. But there's a little hustle in dice that the, the, the I noticed that the black kids do. Where they put it in their palm and they go oh, like Oh, there's different ways to cheat. You could do that. Um, or if you roll like a one, two, three, which is an automatic loss. Like if they roll that and I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, one, two, three. They'd be like, oh, that wasn't that. And then their boys go, nah, he didn't roll one, two, three. And it kind of becomes like uh, your word versus mine. And they're willing to escalate. Because they scooped it up really yeah. quick. Yeah. So you have to like call it out quick when you see it. Um, but I was always fast at analyzing the dice. So I'd be like, one, two, three. Yeah. And they'd be like. Ah, uh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> so as long as you're faster than them. But it's fascinating, right? It's two different approaches from these teachers. The one teacher who's still trying to maintain a, a degree of professionalism and standards, chair thrown at your head. The teacher who completely gives up, he's probably the favorite teacher. Yeah. Oh, Mr. Johnson. Yeah. We going to Mr. Johnson's class today. Exactly. Nothing but dice. He got the dice for us. Yeah. <laughs> 
All right, let's go to the next one. Um, the cops were told to leave. There was an incident. I think this is Atlanta. Yeah, it's Atlanta. There was a shooting. The police came, and then the police were the wrong skin color. So then everyone got mad at the cops. They're trying to sort out who got shot. What happened? No white cops there, Yelling. Oh, you get it. Yeah. So they get told to leave. I think there was a tweet that went along with that. Yeah, this uh, Peachy Keenan said, uh, after I was caught in a drive-by shooting in 2021, literally hiding in my minivan as a crip hid behind it and shot a bunch of bloods, the cops arrived and interviewed me. As I talked to the police officer, a crowd of irate locals from the nearby project started screaming racial slurs at me and him. He was Latino telling me to get the F out of their neighborhood, blaming me and the cop for the gang war, etc. My little boy still has PTSD from that day. So you can have, you can have it. You can have the cities that you want, uh, that you're in, and there's gonna be crime, and everyone's gonna get shot every day, and you're gonna have no police helping. And that's just kind of what you get. And it, didn't that feel like, kind of like a primitive culture? Like this guy's going, what happened? Who, who, who am I talking to? And they're like, get the fuck out. Like, fuck out. Yeah. Like, just uh, unbelievable. It's like two societies. And it's like, okay, well, we'll see how you run it for a while. And if the gang deaths can c continue and you're at all adversarial and you all say, yes, I'm adversarial, no white cops, then we'll send in the real fucking military or something yeah. to get this sorted out. And then it's stop and frisk times 10, you know? That's eventually what's going to happen. I think there is some sort of leeway there if you have... Um, if you have these non-cooperative people, you know, mm -hmm. the, you can make a legal argument for some sort of uh, designation that would allow you to do something beyond the scope of what's normal in society. Yeah. So I'm fine with that. I mean, stop and frisk, like fixed New York and people be like, oh, it's not constitutional. And it's like, yeah, there's a lot of shit that's not constitutional. But when there's gun crime with illegal guns and. They're done. It's done by these 60 people out of 300 in this area. And it's, and I'm going to make it simple for you. It's in like six square blocks. Yeah. You really only have to put uniformed men on like those blocks where all the deaths are happening. Well, let's just go get everyone out. Yeah. All right. Let's go to the kill box. All right. This is kind of a tip, right? Yeah. This is a educational video. Yeah, no, no. See this yawning. guy? He goes right into the kill box. There's no room for him to get out. <laughs> no, no. That guy froze. You see him freeze and go like this? Yeah, he got scared. That's not a good sign. So the kill box, which we always talk about here on the show, is when you're in a car and there's not enough space between you and the car in front of you to pull out and get away in case like a worst case scenario situation happened. There's never a reason to go all the way bumper to bumper. Yeah. Ever. Because you put yourself in the kill box. So that situation, you can avoid that if you didn't have a kill box. You can just go to the right and floor it. Mm -hmm. And also once that guy who had the gun pointed, once he looks away or puts the gun in his sweatshirt for a sec, you just run him over. There's Maybe also, push the girl down just yeah. so she doesn't get shot if he does get a bullet off. There's also a bluff situation where if you, the, someone tries to stop you in a car with a gun, like, what are they going to do? Just execute you if you yeah. don't get the watch? So, you know, there's a gamble there. I'm not recommending it. I'd yeah. say give up the watch, usually. Um, but, yeah, avoid yeah. the kill box and you won't even get to that step two. Exactly. All right. Let's move on. Let's move on. Should we put all of our we have all this whole section of the Venezuelans versus the Afghans, uh, the Philly looters. Let's just go through it quick. OK, we have a section here uh, in urban decay of a bunch of illegals or uh, past criminals who, because of policies and the bail rules, are out on the streets doing more crimes. So this guy from Philly, Kenneth Fry. Yeah, Kenneth Fry was arrested for looting in Philadelphia on Tuesday night. So people started digging around. 
snooping mm-hmm. around the court records and stuff. Turns out Kenneth Fry also beat a man to death last year, but was let out on bail by Soros-funded DA Larry Krasner. Beat a guy to death, and he's allowed to be on the street. Thanks, Larry. Thanks, Larry. Now let's go and What on. did he do when he got his opportunity? I'm going to correct my life. I'm going to fix my mistakes. I'm going to do everything I can to earn back society's trust. No, no. No, he I started, want a laptop. He started I stealing. want a motherfucking laptop. <laughs> yeah. Started immediately stealing shit the first chance he could. Yep. Um, this other one, quick story. Venezuelan students who were struck with baseball bats after school in Rogers Park in Chicago last week were caught up in, quote, cultural differences with Afghan students and are not hate crime victims, local alderman says. That's good to know. So if it's two groups of minorities, it's not a hate crime. I guess if it's white people attacking any minority, it's obviously a hate crime. There's only one street. There's one street on that. And then, you know, Afghans and Venezuelans. You know how they get along. That's like the Capulets and the Montagues. Yeah. That's a, a story as old as time. That goes back millennia. Yeah. The the rivals uh, on the caravans on the way here. Mm-hmm. And they all get in, they get let out, but then they see each other again and it's on. Yeah. And we're going to see that more and more often, these ethnic beefs that kind of like, didn't we see it in Canada? There was like an Indian politician murder mm-hmm. and it's like the Hindus versus the uh, an, another group. I forget mm-hmm, the mm-hmm. Punjabs maybe. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, you know, we're getting into this import the third world. Then you have third world ethnic strife coming. So that's yeah. ju- just reporting. on. And what there was happened. another situation in Minnesota. Speaking of import the third world. Yeah, a man charged with sexual assault of girls in Bemidji. You know Bemidji? Minnesota. Northern Minnesota. Northern Minnesota. Heartland Uh, of America. Bemidji police have arrested a man after an 11-year-old girl told authorities that she and two other girls were tied up and raped by several men at a Bemidji home. On September 23rd, uh, the hospital called the police department after the girl was reporting her injuries. The 11-year-old said she was with a woman who forced her to drink alcohol. A a bag was placed over her head, and she was taken to a home where she was stripped, tied up between two other girls, and raped. The girl said another girl was in a closet while the third girl was bloody and unconscious. Uh, Minnesota. Authorities arrested 22-year-old Oscar Luna, charged with first-degree criminal sexual conduct. Uh, Luna was also arrested on a warrant from Hennepin County. So a guy with multiple warrants who was in the country illegally— and was transported by U.S. Border Patrol to be processed as illegal immigrants, raping 11-year-olds. Yeah, let's just shoot him. Let's just shoot him dead for that. So, you know, yeah. hey, that's classic Midwest shit. This is how it was with Ellis Island. Yeah, this is just, it's, a, yeah. it's exactly how it was. It was degenerate sexual crimes immediately. Yeah, gangs like that. All right, let's move on. Let's not get too down. Let's not get too depressed. Hey, illegal immigration is the single biggest thing going on in the world right now for all Western countries. And, you know, we just want to hammer that point home. Yeah, me too. All right. Uplifting gold. Trucker. I'm not getting a bad mood from that. 11 year old. Uh, Multiple 11 year olds and illegals. And then they they tie them up in some house. And they're not dead. Yeah. And they, they don't just kill them, you know? Yeah. Um, all right. Let's, let's get some uplifting gold. So hopefully uplifting gold next week will be that guy's dead. Yeah. In jail. Keep uh, keep eyes on that story. All right, let's go to the trucking drone shot. This just shows how sophisticated truck driving is and how hard it is and how impressive it is. Trucks drive America. We love truckers. Trucking. Trucking. Every day. We could fast forward a little bit. We get the idea. Maybe go at like a 2x speed. Look at that. Look at that truck turn radius. That guy's got skills. That's skilled labor. Yeah, that's true. Look trucking. at that. Trucks drive America. All right, let's go to the guy who says, my family lifts me up. This is uplifting. Yeah. Textbook. Whenever I am down, whenever I feel the weight of the world on my shoulders, I remember I have my family to lift me up and help me carry that weight. There isn't anything that we can't accomplish together. They make me a better person. Whoa. <laughs> you see, he changed his clothes. Changed his shirt. Wow. So that's good. That's uplifting. Don't forget that. Family is important. Yep. Um, the rat out of the house. All right. This is funny. I so- got it this time. <laughs> I got it this time. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> So I almost got it. All right. That's uplifting. Yeah, yeah, I agree. All right, let's go to the kid that doesn't want to say mom or dad. This is my favorite clip. 
Da 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 da. And mom. I don't want to say that. That's what you call us. I want to say Kayla and Gwen. No. It's not fun. <laughs> it's not fun. The same those. Saying what? The same mom, dad. I don't like it. Well, I don't like being, being called by my first name by you. But I'm a I want to say Kayla and Glenn. Yeah, pipe down, Glenn. <laughs> Glenn. That's pretty good. I like when kids are like mini adults like that. Yeah. That's funny. Me too. All right. Um, the random golf pairing. This These people got paired with this random guy. His name is the Duke. Ooh. <laughs> hey, him. what? That's a good ball, though. They told him to call him the Duke. He told him. One more look at the swing. Yeah, look at the grip too. Give it a ride, Duke. <laughs> Just getting paired up with this guy for 18. Oh, oh look, look at Dookie, man. <laughs> the boy is just having fun with it. That's pretty good. It's called making the best of it. Yep, and our last clip or our last thing is Damn Jake, friend of the show, friend of mine. Look at that fish he got. Yeah. That's a big old fish. Was that a salmon? Yeah, it looks like a spawning salmon. You eat that? I wouldn't eat that one. That one's a little big. That one's a little near death. I'm assuming Jake is catching a spawn scenario where they go and they nut in the river and then they die soon after. So that's kind of a rotting near zombie salmon. Notice how it's not the, but it's a nice catch. I've caught one of those before, Jake. Mm. They're good. The Root River. That's fun. In Racine, Wisconsin. Well, that's fun. Yeah. No, it's cl that's but Americana. You but it's you don't eat, eat it. You don't, I wouldn't eat that. I wouldn't eat that. All right. Last thing of uplifting gold, the Michelin Man. Here's some culture. Here's some history. The original Michelin Man. Can you give us a read? <laughs> it's a long one. The original Michelin Man from 1894. He was, is white because rubber tires are naturally white. It was not until 1912 that carbon chemicals were mixed into the white tires, which turned them black. The change was structural, not aesthetic. By adding carbon, tires became more durable. Michelin also began reviewing restaurants so that more people would travel further distances in their cars to eat at these restaurants. This, in turn, would wear down their tires faster and force people to buy more. Uh, the star system that Michelin uses goes up to three and is broken down by whether or not it's worth driving to the restaurant. One star, a very good restaurant in its category. Two stars, excellent cooking, worth a detour. And three stars, exceptional cuisine, worth a special journey. Isn't that interesting? You know Michelin stars? Yeah, of course. Of I, didn't, course. I didn't know it was the same Michelin. Yeah, I did. I knew that. But and then the tire, and then the Michelin man's white because the tires used to be white, and then they added carbon. Yeah. For structural reasons. For carbon for structure. <laughs> all right. Well, another Fluggus talks in the books. Thank you guys for watching. Like, share, subscribe, all the good stuff. Fluggusmerch.com for the best merch in the game. Fluggustalks.com for bonus land. We have a new bonus land dropping in just a few minutes on Fluggustalks.com. Make sure you guys join us there. And we will see you Friday. What? What did you say?